This is Sarah Wilkinson from Humber College and the University of Guelph Humber. Today I'm going to cover one of the ATP producing pathways, that is the phosphagen system. You may have noticed that there's an A here. Sometimes people spell the phosphagen system with an O. I'm going to put an A in there today. So prior to this video, I covered how enzymes are used in chemical reactions, and I also talked about what adenosine triphosphate is. Please make sure to review those two videos before continuing with this one. In this one, I'm going to talk about one of the ways ATP can be reformed, and this is through using creatine phosphate in the phosphagen system. So one of our substrates, obviously, is adenosine diphosphate. Remember, the phosphate group has been removed to release energy to do cellular work. And now we need to be able to resynthesize ATP. And the way this is going to be done is by creatine phosphate, okay, a molecule of creatine with a phosphate group attached to it, donating a phosphate group to ATP. Some Textbooks also call creatine phosphate phosphocreatine. It's the same thing, creatine phosphate, phosphocreatine, wherever you put the phosphate group in front or behind, same molecule. And every chemical reaction in the body needs an enzyme. And so the enzyme for this reaction is called creatine kinase. Remember, all enzymes end with ASE. And what this is going to do is it's going to lower the activation energy and bring are two substrates in close proximity to one another. So remember, enzymes work through a lock and key mechanism so that very particular substrates bind to them. What this is going to do is allow this high energy phosphate group to transfer to adenosine diphosphate so that it becomes adenosine triphosphate. The other product in this reaction is a molecule of creatine. The phosphate group has been removed, so it's called creatine. So our substrates are ADP, creatine phosphate. The phosphate group gets transferred so that a molecule of ATP is formed and a molecule of creatine is remained. Remember, the products can then leave the enzyme so the enzyme can continue catalyzing further chemical reactions. One of the great things about phosphocretin or the phosphagen system is that the reactions happen in the cytosol, which leaves ATP production in very close proximity to where it is needed. Recall your cytoskeletal proteins, so proteins involved in contraction, are in the cytosol. Many other ATP required pathways are located in the cytosol. The other wonderful thing about the phosphagen system is that it's a single step reaction, so that ATP is produced very, very quickly. One of the unfortunate things is that we have very, very limited stores of phosphocretin or creatine phosphate, so therefore this pathway is not going to last very long producing ATP, but it's going to be quick, it's going to be close to where it's needed, but limited duration. So we're going to be covering a few of the ATP forming pathways. This one today was the phosphagen system. And further videos will cover anaerobic glycolysis and oxidative phosphorylation. Please make sure to review the video on oxidation and reduction reactions in ATP production before watching anaerobic glycolysis and oxidative phosphorylation videos.